One day I was just kind of exploring tea. I was, I've always had a little interest in it. And I decided I'm going to order some actual good green tea. And I did. And I ordered it from Japan. I got it. And um, I remember it was in the evening. And I thought, maybe I shouldn't drink this because I don't want to be up. But now I have to try it. So I tried it, and I couldn't believe it. It, it just it was the most amazing taste. About three weeks ago, I went to Pittsburgh to start my training and participate in an intensive two-day uh, process to begin um, my certification as a tea sommelier. A tea sommelier, just like a wine sommelier, is someone that's well versed in this beverage. Um, I, a sommelier knows how to prepare the beverage, so tea, how to prepare different teas, and there are six types of tea that come all from the same bush. I think that's what is beginning to slowly change and I hope to see change a lot in American culture is to realize that it's it's not Lipton tea. Uh, Lipton tea is I mean it's good for what it is. It's cheap, it's it has a good taste. I mean I'm not I'm not saying Lipton tea is terrible um, but there's so much more to explore. I teach the students about traditional brewing processes and one of the problems that I see with the current scientific literature is the fact that when they go, when a lot of researchers go and look for things like theanine or caffeine, they do so in a scientific way. They put the tea in an organic solvent and extract it and then they look at it on an instrument. I don't want to do that. I want to go by traditional methods like the consumer would use. And so what the students are seeing is how to choose variables of a very simple process and relate that to science and then they can use those skills to kind of build and become better scientists and you know they're learning about something that's healthy and um, like I said that will probably be more popular within the coming years.